They're now asking us to understand what's the behavior of this function here, particularly the square root of the function, because they want the velocity, not the square of the velocity, as the angle that you actually shoot at as it changes in relation to the angle of the hoop. So let's look at part two. They're interested in the limit of velocity as theta approaches alpha. Now just think for a second. Just don't, don't start doing algebra yet. Look at the diagram. Look at the diagram. What does this mean? As theta gets closer to alpha, right, what you're doing is you're trying to throw the ball like as close as you can, straight at the hoop. Does that make sense? Like directly at the hoop, okay? Now therefore, don't, don't shout it out yet. But what would you anticipate the answer to be? Think about if you threw it up like this in the nice kind of arc that they've got there. And what will have to change to the how hard you throw the ball as your angle of throwing gets closer and closer to the actual angle of the hoop? Just think about it for a minute. Try and intuitively have an answer in your head. And then now let's think about the algebra. Okay, let's see if we can confirm or not what your, uh, what your thought was. I'm looking for the limit as the square root of this, right, as theta approaches alpha. Okay, now there's a lot, lots of bits and pieces here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, look, see how this is connected to alpha, right? Just this guy. So I'm just going to think about him as theta approaches alpha. And then I'll sort of build the rest of it around. Okay, so let's think as theta approaches alpha. Let's just think about that cos squared theta business, right? What happens to this guy? What happens to this guy? Well, just looking at the way I phrased this expression, there's no problems with just evaluating it at the limit, right? You see that? There's no issues with doing that. So I'm just going to substitute in, this is going to be cos squared alpha on, sorry, multiply by 10 alpha, yes? Hold on. 10 alpha, 10 alpha, that's just sine alpha on cos alpha, right? So therefore, one of these cosines is going to cancel with the cosine in this denominator, right? So what do I get left with? Sine alpha. Yeah, um, I'll just write it in this order. Cos alpha, <laughs> sine alpha. That's what you get left with, okay? Now that's what you get on the right-hand part of this denominator. But look, if you rehearse the same argument with this, what happens to this as theta approaches alpha? What does it approach? Answer, it approaches exactly the same thing. So I'm going to extend this logic and I'm going to say, therefore, the limit as theta approaches alpha of the whole denominator. Just think about the denominator right now, okay? And I wonder if you can see why I'm just thinking about the denominator. When I put in both pieces of the denominator, it's clearly going to tend towards zero. zero. Very good. Now, this is what's nice about having just dealt with the pieces, okay? I can just say it's zero, whereas I can't do that when I've got the whole thing, because you can't put zero on a denominator. But now that I know the denominator is going to zero, what does that tell you about the whole fraction? It's getting bigger. It's going bigger and bigger and bigger. Actually, it's tending towards infinity, right? So therefore, the limit as theta approaches alpha of v squared, that's the, the whole thing over there, is going to be infinity and so therefore theta which is actually the bit I'm interested in sorry v which is the bit I'm interested in also tends to infinity okay now I asked you before to have a guess as to what was happening right like what happens as the angle I'm actually throwing at gets closer and closer to the angle of the actual hoop does this make sense right I have to throw harder and harder to get there because can you imagine, right? If I'm, here's, here's the hoop up here and here's me, okay? If I throw it at the same angle and I throw it just kind of like, I give it a bit of a wimpy throw, right? The second I throw, what's going to happen? It's just going to drop down, right? I've got to throw, if I throw a bit harder, it'll come off at this angle, but it's going to come down because gravity is already doing stuff to it. The second I release, in fact, if I want that to be a straight line, right? That means it has to be thrown so hard that like it doesn't actually experience gravity at all. So I hope you got a good arm on you, okay? So now I want you to think for a second, having applied that logic and then seeing what happened, what do you make of part two of the same question? They're thinking about theta approaching a different angle. What angle are they looking at? Yep, okay, so if you're throwing at pi on two radians or 90 degrees, now I wonder if you can 
actually talked me through this. If you can think hard enough to work out physically what's going on. What angle am I throwing at? What does this look like for the basketball player? Yeah, it's just throwing straight up, right? So for example, we know it's gonna be something like this would be a nice angle to throw at, okay? But if you wanted to throw it higher, like, cause you know, cause like Mark's standing in front of you, right? Thanks a lot, Mark. Okay, so therefore, you need to get it over here. So you've got to throw at a higher angle, which means you've got to throw it harder, clearly, because it's going to make this huge, it's much bigger distance, right? So therefore, I'm guessing, even though I'm putting in a different value here, I'm predicting it will be the same limit. Does that make sense? What algebra can we use to verify that? How, how would you like to construct this next part? Because this, I think, is part one, part one. Uh, part two, part one, and this is part two, part two. Okay. Okay, so as theta approaches pi L2, I'm going to think about which part, of, what would you like me to put in? What would you like me to evaluate? Just that guy? So you want me to do the whole denominator? That's okay. Oh. It doesn't matter. Ah, okay, so again, because I'm just dealing with the denominator, this guy's dying a little bit. Because I'm just dealing with the denominator, and he has no problems at the particular value that I've been given, I've been asked to evaluate, I'm just going to throw pi on 2 in. I'm just going to put him in. Uh, cos of pi on 2, of course, is 0. Now, I'm evaluating a limit, right? Now, I know the 0 times anything is 0, but I want to show what's going on. This is actually going to a value, right? Which then becomes trivial. Does that make sense? In the same way, you get 0 squared times tan alpha, which also becomes trivial. So therefore, just like before, the denominator tends to 0, which means the whole thing tends to infinity, and you can make the same argument. You, you, you do the same thing all the time. No, but 0 times infinity is still 0. Now, you've got to be careful, because if you are saying zero times infinity, you're comparing a number with a non-number. Yeah, exactly. If you are thinking about things behaving, right? Like for example, if I were to compare like y equals x versus y equals one on x, as x approaches zero, right? Well, what does x times one on x, what would you say that that's equal to? As it approaches zero. As it approaches zero. I'll just let you think about that. I'll just let you think about it, okay? So just be careful with when you throw around zeros and fees. They don't like to behave like normal numbers. Okay.